Hi, this video is going to go over a quick tour of a Niagara-based BAS system. So this is for the um, Delaware Tech Dover campus, and this is um, gives you just, just the landing page and gives you a little bit overview of uh, what's going on here. Um, it's a pretty hot day in August. It's 90 degrees outside. That's what out, OA is outside air. Um, it's not very humid, though. It's only 64% humidity. So... Um, there's a couple different things as you if, when you first start you'll just see these these three options here um, home is where we at, are at now uh, we'll start with hierarchy um, you'll find a lot of this is typical um, naming is not um, great because this says seat only which is the name of one of the buildings on campus but then it has a bunch of it then has, has some other buildings in the terry campus underneath here um, so um, again naming is not always great so let's just go to a typical um, this is a CT, the CTC building. We'll just go right now to um, a VAV box. So we're just going to do VAV 6-4. And this is just going to give us a visual representation of what's going on. Um, in this case, what happens is you get some cold air from an air handling unit. It's not important to know what that is right now. Um, but then it, you use a fan to blow it into the room. So the room's down here. The air handling unit would be somewhere up here connected to these pipes. And um, and you just blow more or um, less air, depending on how much um, air conditioning you need in the space. So that's the idea. You can also see some set points down here and some max and min flows. Um, and then um, here you can see the room temperature and the room relative humidity and whatnot. So, so this is all well and good. You could do lots of different things. One of my favorites is the boiler room, um, just to show you what's going on in the boiler. Um, and, and, and how that's working and this is you know there's an exhaust fan in there as well no, not too and then there's you can also see that air handling unit just to see if you were wondering what was going on above there um, so we're not going to get into all of this um, really what I want you to show you is how to get the data off of here and figure that out for the time being so we are going to instead of looking at the um, hierarchy we're going to go and look at the histories because that's really where the data lives so we're going to go ahead and click on histories and we're going to look at the ctc building um, there's lots of data here we're basically just going to look at room temperatures because that's the easiest thing to think about um, and start with so um, and figure out what's going on with that so we're just going to go down to the vav section because all the vavs are um, they give you room temperatures for one um, one space or one one zone that's being being conditioned. So um, let's just go with six four for right now. Um, you might want to do a different space if you're analyzing this, but let's just look at this. And there's duct temperature, box flow, and then here's space temp. So we're going to go ahead and just click, hold down, and drag over. It's a little bit weird. Or actually, no, I'm sorry. Double click for the first time, and that'll bring it up. So um, this is an incredibly interesting. The space temperature um, has been relatively constant. The other thing to notice is that this is a big range here. So there's three, 300 degrees Fahrenheit to you know, negative 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So what you can do to resize, um, and it'll make it a little bit more interesting, is you can click and drag, uh, that's the wrong direction, click and drag up, and that'll zoom in this axis. And it gives you a little bit better picture um, now, this is just for, um, you know, just for today. So just until, you know, from 12 a.m. to, uh, and this is every, it looks like it's every 15 minutes. So it's just for the last couple hours, actually. So we, we want to change that, really. So what if we look at um, the last um, last week, say? So this is seven days worth of data, say. And sometimes it takes a little while. So just give it a second. There it is. OK, so this is the past seven days. Click and drag that. Sometimes it takes a little bit of getting used to, as you can see me struggling a little bit as to where to click and drag to make it move the way you want it to. So this is um, you know, a pattern we can see. And it looks like what's happening is a little before um, you know 9 a.m. or 8 a.m., it's it's relatively warmer in the room, 73 say, um, and then it it kicks down to 70 degrees or 68 degrees, and then at um, you know 10:15, it 
um, starts gradually heating up, which which means that the air conditioning um, seems to be um, kicking on and off at night, which is a good sign. So um, so to save energy and money. So this is good, um, and it does give you some good visuals, and you can do a lot with it. But we want to um, put it into um, Excel and DView sometimes. So we want to get the data out. Um, and if you remember that DView really likes hourly data, so we want to get some hourly data out. So um, the big thing to check with this is if we go to the, um, the little settings box up here in the bottom, top right corner, um, it gives you some options with color and whatnot. But I really like the sampling tab. So the sampling tab basically is showing you how many samples to take during that time period. Now, um, what you want to do is you want to first, um, you want to first, let me bring up a calculator so you can so you can see the calculations I'm doing instead of me just talking through it. Um, so you want to figure out, this is last week, right? So it's seven days. So there's seven times 24 hours. So there's 168 um, total hours. So that's what um, we want to be a sample size. So if we do that at 168 and we hit OK, it looks a little bit different. It's not as granular. But it still gives us the general trend. And then we will be able to easily view it in DView and whatnot. And you can see 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m. It's right on the dot, right? Um, which is great. Um, so, so that's good. So, and then what we would do is we would export it here. Um, and you know what? Let me just do a yearly one, then I'll export the yearly one so you can see what's going on. Um, so if we go to sampling, I'm sorry. First thing we want to do instead of last week, let's just do last year. We could do like we could put it in so it's a um, another year, but this is last year. So, and let's zoom in just to see. So here's the problem, is that if we look at it like this, it looks like, oh man, last year it was like all 70 degrees all the time, every time. The problem is, is that the sampling is so low, it takes an average, and so it sort of just averages the temperature in that room. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to sampling, and you can see that there's 34,938 data points available, and it's taking only 168 of them, and it's averaging them. So that's a problem. So what we're going to do, again, it's a whole year. So we're just going to do 365 times 24. Hopefully this isn't a leap year. If it is, we'll adjust. And then um, we'll go to sample size of 8,760. So now this will give us a little bit better. You can see the data actually looks um, a little bit better in this case. Um, well, at least it's moving up and down. I don't know what better means, but at least you can see more trends and whatnot, what's going on. And you can see every time I'm scrolling over, it is right an hour right on the hour. So that's good. So we don't have to worry about the leap here. Okay. So now we're going to export just so we can see what it looks like. We'll go to export wizard. We don't want to download the chart. We actually want to download the CSV. Um, and then we are going to hit OK. Oh, and sometimes it doesn't like this file name. It doesn't like the... Um, this thing. So let's just rename it um, six um, underscore four space temp. So and then it'll t take us to say where it wants us to do it. We'll download it, open it up, see what it looks like, and you can see um, again it'll give you that um, that error message sometimes. So we can see it's just a timestamp and then a space temperature here. Um, to get it into DView, the easiest thing to do, DView doesn't really need the timestamp, so I usually just like to um, delete this and then do a file, save as, under my downloads, um, instead of a comma delimited, or I'm sorry, we do a comma delimited, and I just say for DView, so I know later that it's a DView file. And then we can go ahead in, um, and open it up in DView, um, just like that. So... Um, so if we open up our D view here, we have it here. Let's go ahead and open. We'll t that's the file we just saved. We'll open that up. And um, sometimes it'll start with hourly. I had already had this open. But um, we can just look at our heat map real quick. And it looks like it goes from a low of 59 to a high of 85. Um, 
and you know during our summer nights and early mornings it looks like it's a little bit hotter um, and every once in a while in the winter it gets colder um, but there are a good bit of times where it doesn't um, get colder at night and whatnot so it might be something to look into um, we can look at the profile for different months as well just to see what's going on so um, DB gives you a lot of information and so and so would pivot tables in Excel so um, that's how you do that